Hi, everyone. It's an honor to be here today and present in front of such a great crowd. So today I wanted to take you on the journey of how our mental status is affected by our diets and perhaps present you some fascinating new discoveries and maybe share a couple of maybe unexpected, surprising nutritional hacks that you can do to feel happier. How about that? Mm -hmm. Right. There is a whole nutritional field that is dedicated to studying how our diets are connected to our mental health. It's called nutritional psych psychiatry. And um, they've established that, obviously, there is a link. Uh, healthy dietary patterns are associated with reduced risk of mental disorders, and unhealthy dietary patterns are associated with, obviously, higher risks. And uh, it's, I guess it's more important of what you don't eat rather than what you eat that is connected to your mental health. We also know that all of this is true for all countries, all cultures, all ages, and we have extensive animal data to support this. In fact, um, official guidelines has just been published in November, 1st of November, that recommend specific type of diet for people with depression. And diet is plant-based with increased intake of fiber and fish. No surprise, is there? But I'm wondering how, I'm wondering why our diet affects our mental health. How does it work? And there's a lot of different mechanisms involved and a lot of science around it. Um, is it because good diet is providing us with a lot of nutrients, all of these micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, we hear all about antioxidants, is that why? Or maybe it's because of anti-inflammatory mechanism. Because we know when we have depressed or anxious brain, we have inflammation in our brain. So maybe this diet is anti-inflammatory and reduces its inflammation and helps us feel better. There's so many different theories about that. But I think we just found it. And I'm very proud to present you second brain. Have you heard of second brain before? So we've discovered second brain and some scientists actually say that second brain is much more important than this one. And it's located here. It's in our gut. So let me present you the microbiome. This is our second brain. It consists of different types of bacteria, fungi, viruses, yeast, parasite, everything that lives inside of us and actually on us. We, according to some research, we only about 30 to 10% humans. The rest are made up from microbial cells and only about 30 trillion cells are human. That's quite shocking, isn't it? We ruled by them. And this experiment was done back in the 60s, so we knew about this for a long time. We just didn't pay much attention then. So experiment on mice. Mice, was, mice were infected by a virus or um, a parasite called toxoplasmosis. And what it does to mice, it removes the fear of cat. Not only that, but it actually makes them love cats. And of course, then, as a result, they're getting killed. But what this is telling us is the, the gut microbes, or wherever they are, they change our brain completely, change our behavior. This is very powerful. And what the scientists find out, after some time, when the parasite was long gone, mice still loved cats. It didn't disappear. So the, the change is actually permanent. And then there was this study. Uh, the scientists wanted to see if there is any connection, the causal connection between depressive microbiome and symptoms of depressions. Uh, depression. So what they did, they took fecal transplantation from people with depression and they put them into mice. And mice started exhibiting 
symptoms of depression. For example, they lost interest in very enjoyable activities, things like drinking sugary water. They had absolutely no interest anymore. And that's the sign of depression, isn't it? And then the field has exploded. Now we see studies published almost every week on the connection between our gut microbiome and mental health. In February this year, there was a study um, that actually identified two types of bacteria that are linked to depression. So people with depression do not possess these two types of bacteria. So it's not really that the bad bacteria makes you depressed, it's the other way around. It can be the other way around. So the certain types of bacteria are necessary for us to feel good. And it's all about diversity of our microbiome. It's not just about one type of bacteria. <sighs> and again, we're thinking how? How these bacteria and microbiome, how does it talk to our brain? And we recently discovered that about 90% of serotonin, which is our happy hormone, is actually produced in the gut by those bacteria. 50% of dopamine, also produced in the gut. And we know that about 80% of communication actually goes from the gut into our brain, and only 20% back. This is how powerful they are. If you can imagine bacteria, they're like little factories that sit there, produce a lot of metabolites or chemicals or messengers. And these messengers are traveling to our brain and control us. They tell us how to feel and how to behave. Isn't this amazing? And this is how depressed or anxious microbiome looks like. So this is the test, this is a stool test, the DNA stool test, that show, shows us where this person is compared to healthy. So you can see it right here. This is patient's results, and you can see all of the different classes of bacteria are quite low compared to healthy. This is where we want to see you most of the time. And we also want to see the majority of all these types of bacteria somewhere here in the middle, in the green. Um, you can see DL means below detectable level. So this person did not possess a lot of necessary beneficial bacteria. I, I don't really even need to, to see that person. I know they have issues with mental health. Let's focus on the good side. So what can we do to actually improve our microbiome? We know that the way how you were born affects how your microbiome develops. So if you're a C-section baby, you develop a completely different set of microbes. We also know that exercise is good for it, right? Lots of studies done on that. If we exercise, the diversity of our microbiome improves dramatically. We know that exposure to sunlight improves our microbiome. This is your connection with vitamin D and depression, you probably know about. Having pets, of course, because they are micro microbiome carriers, so they have their own microbes that they bring and enrich ours. Having good sleep, also very important. There's also environment to take into account. There are a lot of different things that can damage our microbiome and can reduce the diversity. Things like antibiotics and food additives, and of course sugar and alcohol and pesticides. That's why it's important to have organic food. But the most powerful thing you can do is diet. Of course, I'm sure you all know that. But what I found through research, that diet is so powerful, it can change your microbiome only in three to four days. This is how long it takes. The change is dramatic. And it's all about diversity. Not one certain food. It's not about eating broccoli every day. It's not. It's really about the different things, the diversity. The more diverse your diet is, the better or more diverse your, your microbiome is. But there is a catch with that. I hate to tell you this, but it's personal. If you put 10 people on the same super healthy, di diverse diet, they're not gonna have the same response. Some people will respond one way, some people will grow a completely different set of microbes. 
So the response is really different. And this is why it's so difficult to do any scientific research on this, because the response, because we're individual, we're so unique. And that's why the responses are unique. So this was the study that I found that um, put um, 34 people on the same diet and the responses, they got 34 different responses, which is crazy. What do you do with this information, right? Hmm, there are also psychobiotics, they call them. So these are all your fermented probiotic foods that you can put into your diet and eat on a daily basis, and they help you get your good bacteria. Things like um, sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, all of them are very famous and very popular now. There is also things like prebiotics that feed our bacteria, preferentially feed certain types of bacteria. And of course, we know about this, this fibrous vegetables. But then I thought, if I were to choose one idea, something that everyone can do, and something that is also very powerful at improving diversity of your microbiome, and I said to search in the studies, and when I found it, I knew that was it. I was so excited about it. It's not a new idea. It's fasting. And I think our predecessors knew what they were doing. Every single religion in the world has some kind of fasting regime. And we've done it for centuries. Even Plato fasted for greater physical and mental efficiency. So that was famous then. There are lots of studies uh, that are done now. This one was quite extreme, actually. Uh, they've done, and that was the study of um, fasting before and after. They compared the health, blood tests, microbiome testing, everything they could test for and that's a very famous fasting center in Germany. They to put 1,400 people on fasts, and the fasts were different between four and 21 days. And what they found, that increase in physical and emotional well-being was extremely significant. Probably scientists in the room would know what that number means, as shows significance. So every single person reported that effect. Of course, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about extreme fasting here. What I'm saying is maybe you'll find a way how you can do it. There's lots of different ways how people do it nowadays. There is 5-2 diet where you fast for two days in a week or just reduce your calorie consumption to 500 or 600 for men. Or some people prefer to do 16-8, which is eight hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting, but you have to do that every day. Or some people choose to do five hour fast between each meal, which is actually just normal eating, not snacking all the time. Uh, the majority of research is done on alternate day fasting. This is you just change feasting days with fasting days. But all of the different types of fasting actually are the same, have the same effectiveness. Uh, but of course, it will depend, the optimal timing of eating would depend on various factors in your life. And again, that's kind of individual. Um, and then I thought, hmm, are there any studies actually on fasting or caloric restriction on diet? We, we have a lot of studies to prove that it changes our microbiome, yes. But on, on, on um, depression, do we have any studies on depression? And I was um, actually able to find um, a big review of randomized controlled trials that did confirm that yes, fasting was like a, an antidepressant pill. Compared to that, the effect was so dramatic that there was no, there was no guessing, I guess, about that. There are some contraindications though. It is not recommended if you're too old, too frail, if you're a child, of course, pregnant, breastfeeding, if you have any history of eating disorders, if you're medication, if you have advanced diabetes. So probably not the best choice for you. 
And again, very important that any drastic lifestyle and dietary changes that you do, you do it with trusted healthcare professional and you have to clear it with your doctor. So some practical tips. You have to talk with your doctor first. You have to ease into it. Maybe try and push your breakfast slightly later. Maybe do your 14-10 protocol. So 14 hours fast, 10 hours eating. And then think about nutrient density. So that first meal of the day needs to be a very good meal. And remember about variety. It's not about eating the same thing every day, even though it's good things. It's about different things. The thing is, um, yes, this, the, those bacteria in our gut, they can control how we feel and how we behave. But you have the power to change that. So what are you going to do about it? Hope you enjoy your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So given how everybody's unique, how do I know what the perfect diet is for me to improve my mental state? I'm afraid we'll have to test you. When can you book me in? <laughs> <laughs> of course, any time, yes. Okay. Oh, I heard this new, new thing recently been published. They are working on smart loos. Right. So you don't really need to do any stool testing collection. Right. You have to just go in the loo and we'll take a sample, it will analyze it, and it will tell you what to eat. Corporate property that? services, I think, are in the audience. I'll put that to Alistair. <laughs> Where are you, Alistair? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you. Thank really you. Thank you. <laughs>